Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Digby. Upper left hand corner, we have none other than Flash starting as the orange Terran. Upper right hand corner, we have, I'm just going to call him Jazz, even though that's an I. Ooh, Jazz. I guess I could go, ooh, I as would be the other way to do it. He's the white Protoss. This is going to be on Kickback, which looks like this new map where you have the inverted ramp to protected natural expansion up there. Uh, you need this sunken colony to provide some space for Zerg. Um, natural expansion here and another protected natural here. This could be a really difficult map for Terran versus Zerg. When you have Zerg that has three protected bases, um, granted it's less gas, it's 3,000 gas instead of the usual 5,000 in the space of this, but even getting up to the three gas production can be uh, in a really nice protected field like that can be really nice for Zerg. So we'll see how it plays out. But this is going to be, of course, uh, TVP. If you have not watched Artosis' channel, he's been casting a lot of Flash games. Everybody sees the word Flash and they click on the video. That's maybe why a lot of you guys are here. Um, so I figured I'd go ahead and toss one in as well for filler. Um, wish I spoke Korean so I could tell you guys what the questions are. And so maybe it's, are you Flash? Uh, Flash has been doing really interesting things in TVP. Um, where a lot of other players... So let's talk about the meta for a second. The previous meta was really Upgrade Terran. Um... And where Terran kind of went for either plus, and it was kind of worked on, I, I would say, two factors. One, there was a really strong plus one weapons push around, I think, 730, somewhere around there. And then if you waited around the plus two weapon, plus one armor, you got a really strong push that Protoss had trouble dealing with, and they didn't quite know. And you could also um, just fold it back if things went really, really bad, if you had a nearby three base on a map like Ascension, to just sit on three bases and work it out that way. By the way, we're seeing a uh, barracks and gas grab here from Flash uh, making his way out, not going for front door seal. We're seeing cybernetic score uh, gas similar. So no, no proxy tech, anything along those lines. Anyway, where were we from there? Uh, meta, it looks like it's going to be first scout from Flash, by the way. Terran in that sort of posture, though, played very, very defensively. And that's kind of how the meta has been, honestly, for a lot of TVP is Protoss plays very defensive, or uh, Terran plays very defensively and tries to build up a sufficient amount of siege tanks. Protoss tries to negate that siege tank count, tries to keep that siege tank count low. Then there was some sort of shift where uh, it, it, it wasn't exactly a full shift. It was, let's go vultures with mines to start, go three marines and a vulture to start to deal with an initial dragoon and then get a vulture out on the map so that there's this threat of a vulture to pin back the dragoons so they're not attacking our siege tanks out. So we can get siege tanks and then some players are like you know what let's just go a lot of vultures for a long period of time and build the siege tanks but not upgrade siege and then there's been like let's not bother anything but vultures in the early game and it feels like that's and it's flipped the meta a bit and i feel like that's where flash has gone where it's i'm going to play very very aggressively in the early game with marines and vultures to keep the dragoon count low and that does uh it does a number of things for Terran. one um it it, you just, uh, well, it, one, you have to micro it really, really well. It requires more multitasking is an aspect of it. But two, what it does is you get the constant scouting information that you might be denied otherwise. By the way, we're seeing a bunker built, a single Marine, and a Vulture constructed. This could actually be danger. Ooh, and he's taking some damage on that initial Marine as well. Probe dies, but this Marine is not going to be in time. The Dragoon is going to be able to, might be able to get the kill. Ooh, got in last second with a sliver of health, but now that Dragoon going to be able to make its way across and create some havoc. And this is also before that first Vulture is able to get out on the map. So that Vulture is taking a lot of damage, trying to, yeah, doing attack of damage there. So now we got two Marines. It's going to take three Marines and not even a pure three Marine, although that Dragoon's taking a lot of damage uh, in the space of this. It's going to be three staggered Marines in the midst of this. That Vulture does get out in the field, but we've got more Dragoons making the way up. And also it's going to be challenging for SCVs to go and repair this bunker. So... And this one going to walk in as well. All sorts of chaos. Ooh, getting spicy against Flash here. So now some SCV going to need to get pulled. And this is definitely a hurt on the early game. Dragoon down. Second Marine might get wiped out here in the midst of this. Some nice micro on this guy. Uh, Dragoon, yeah, and this is delayed mining time. At least SCVs aren't dying in the space of this. Uh, but this is a, a nice bit of chaos here. By the way, an SCV stuck out to go ahead and repair. And we still have that natural expansion up on the high ground getting built. Another Marine down, another Marine in the bunker, but the Dragoons continue to file in while this front door is open. An SCV sneaking in there to save its own life might, yeah, going to sneak in. All three of them actually going to sneak in and fold their way out, blocking that last Dragoon in as the Siege Tank spawns to get a bonus kill. Wow, what a, holy cow, what a pro move right last second, but this Dragoon going to fold back. So we're not going to see it this time. 
potentially as a result of all this. Um, but we'll see if Flash figures out a way to make it work anyway. Never mind, he's going to make his way out anyway. Because he kind of accomplished what he was looking for in general, which is again, uh, so we got third Nexus dropping pretty rapidly, which is uh, keep the, and he's going to continue to build Marines and siege tanks and go aggressive with this. By going aggressive with this, what this uh, oftentimes does is it makes it so he knows, first of all, what his opponent's doing typically. A little bit harder on this map. Um, he knows whether they're expanding to three bases, things like that. He knows by the by getting in his face and keeping an eye on the Dragoon count, he knows typically how many gateways are at. By the way, this is one gateway, and these Dragoons are going up against two Siege Tanks, four Marines. So Probe is very likely going to have to get pulled against this. But what that also means is Flash doesn't have to build an Academy until much, much later in the game when he has less vision out on the field. And typically he ends up with a lot of vision, and this just makes it so he knows, he kind of, it, it makes it where the Protoss doesn't have as many options as far as game choice. It takes the tempo away from them. So I kind of like this style of play overall. Single Marine dying there, by the way, in the Siege Tank, and I think Jazz, this might be game here. Jazz getting caught, two Siege Tanks, the Dragoon's moving up to the high ground to try to abuse that. We already have some mines over the one gateway that's there. Siege Tank's making the way to the north, mines on either side. So now you got completely exposed probe line. That mine looks like it was sniped by Jazz. I think this is a pro gamer of some sort on the opposite side. One siege tank picked off. More focus fire. Second siege tank picked off. That was... That's kept him in this game. Any other player... Uh, most players would fold, honestly. Even pro gamers. We still have got the mines getting cleared. Wow, look at these mine pickoffs. The Vulture still getting kills in the space of this. Oh, loses a Dragoon in the midst. Now, this is... Yeah, Flash's playstyle. Keep the Vultures on top of his opponent. Keep dropping the mines. Find opportunities to slow your opponent down, and you just, and it looks like he's getting into, oh, is he going to get that? Okay, Probe gets sniped as well. Wow. I got to say, Jazz, I, I need to look up this ID. The Jazz is clearly someone who's a pro, because the micro there, absolutely insane. Second factory getting dropped. This uh, honestly kind of looks like snow-like uh, play right here. Refinery getting dropped. Third base now, making its way for Flash. And now you'll see, at this stage of things, now that he's a little bit more locked in, as in, he doesn't have the same degree of map control or, or things along those lines. He'll, he'll start adding on those other things that, he, you know, are kind of necessary for Terran to worry about. Where he's like, okay, I know there's not DTs because I push... And I'm wondering, actually, if this is what this is going to end up doing is, is opening up more two-base DT play for Protoss. Because that's a way I could see this creating some problems for Terran. Um, but basically, as a result, he doesn't need that engineering bay as early. So yeah, he doesn't need a lot of things as early. Um, <clears throat> can build the turrets now at the eight minute mark. Um, as far as it c concerns, I mean, he saw whether there was a robo or not and whether there are reavers on the field based on earlier pressure. So it just, he ends up with a lot more information in the early game. In my, and I think that's the brilliance of this is he ends up with more information in the early game. So it, it, he just has more opportunities to react. And it also pushes back a lot of necessity of a lot of other pieces of tech, explicitly uh, things like turrets, the engineering bay, the academy, in Comsat. Um, so third base going to go up. It looks like he's going to go ahead and drop that starport and make his way. Uh, I think this is for plus two weapons. It's possible this is for drop. Drop could get real interesting actually because of this inverted ramp on these high uh, on the high ground in the space of this. Observer trying to uh, find it. It is going to be able to find the two factories here. So he's going to and that's oftentimes what Protoss are looking for is what is the factory count. I'm actually a little bit shocked that uh, Flash did not put any sort of buffer right there maybe he felt like he did enough damage in the early game where it's not going to make that much of a difference we do have a decent supply lead fourth base now being built upon spotting just the two factories right and also the lighter siege tank count second armory so this is actually a fold back into upgrade terran now after a lot of that early damage and now we're seeing the academy like around almost the 10 minute mark well nine ish 10 minute mark because this is when flash needs that information right because he can't run out on the map uh, to just go and spot and find it. So anyway, point being, I like the optimization of this style and build. And I'm wondering if other, uh, very likely look for other Terran to adopt it. I could work really, really well for players like Sharp, I think. Dragoon's starting to make their way across. You got siege tanks and a lot of positions to, and, and this might just be a map architecture thing where it could really, really hurt and abuse some things. But right now, uh, doesn't have a lot of information. Maybe a shot alongside this could create some havoc. Uh, and abuse some things. It looks like they're just going to do some damage from those barracks. This tank's now sieging. We got now the three uh, going up the five factory in the space of this. So this is kind of turning into what will be 
a plus two, plus one weapon, but at a later mark, I think around 1230 approximately. Going ahead and dropping a commsat. Not seeing where that commsat was. It looks like he's just checking out the saturation and whether there's a third gas. And also seeing if there, there were additional gateways dropped. Did find the Citadel of a Dune in the space of this. Um, checking at, oh, finding some probes on transition. So he knows that there's also a fourth base at the very, at the most up. And it looks like we do have a fifth base getting grabbed here, bottom right. So four bases are up, which is putting Jazz in a pretty strong situation versus Flash right here, actually. Um, he's got the worker lead he wants. He's got about the 20 supply lead he's, he's going to want. Now the question is, is, is he going to be able to deal with that uh, timing push out? We also have some Dragoons. I like them positioned here at the 12 o'clock just in case a dropship was making its way out. Control tower is dropping in the space of this. And we're going up to ooh, a lot of factory. I think this is also kickbacks a little different than other maps where you kind of have to worry about getting yourself contained uh, depending on what race uh, you're playing. Third machine shop getting dropped in the midst of this, but we're going up to eight factories off uh, three bases. So it's also possible, we'll see if Flash goes for the timing or if he actually just sits back. He does have three bases to work with. You have less gas to work with, again, because of that 3,000 gas pile and running out of that gas can absolutely be devastating. Um, but at the same time, you can sit back and, you know, max out before you decide to move out. We also have Stasis, by the way, upgrading. Uh, in the backfield somewhere around here it means we got a Templar archives and uh, it looks like it's going to it's kind of pocketed up here good spread attack some probes making their way bottom right this is a very healthy late game count for jazz so we got a pretty strong game but here's the plus two weapons uh plus one armor potential move out here from flash now my secondary question is is what a lot of Terran have done is is they've kind of pressured this gonna get some free dragoons right there they've pressured this but it's just kind of like a, a threat. It's not a, and maybe not a pro gamer there. That wasn't the pro gamer move back of those dragoons on the front, but very skilled player, obviously, regardless. Um, Science Festival is going to be able to catch that probe on that forward edge. I like the Marines being useful here and, and kind of scouting forward to see how things are going. Some vultures streaming their way across. That bottom right hand corner is blockaded. The three clock location also blockaded. Dragoons slightly. So this is kind of interesting. He's trying to find that army and figure out where that army staged at. So finds that bottom right hand base up. And, he's, and I love this from Flash. He's still not using Comsat. He's using uh, everything he's got just to get an idea of where his opponent's at and what the, the unit composition is. Using the units aggressively to get a good look at what the composition is and making decisions from there. Some more vultures streaming across. So it looks like Flash, upon seeing the five bases up, I would not be shocked actually if he decides to just go ahead and take the 12 o'clock or something along those lines after dropping a lot of mines. Uh, to the forward front looks like the we do have stasis and an arbiter here on the front mine's getting dragged into those alts that were exposed a little bit so yeah so just dropping some mines in no man's land things from there but i don't see any movements currently so looks like he just maybe he just wanted to move out gets a good amount of mines out on the field before he decided to go for the initial attack or maybe just waiting on goliath or some other piece maybe he just wanted to make sure plus two weapons plus one armor is there but now starting to make movements <clears throat> and here's it and this isn't at 200 supply. This is actually a 40 supply lead from Jazz, but the problem is, is it's 40 supply lead of plus one Dragoons and Zealots primarily. And I only see one Arbiter out in the field, not a lot of other tech units. And there's enough architecture on this where he's going to have to go through large funnels to try to engage this army. And you can see where if he tries to make his way to the south, uh, it opens up kind of a gap towards that natural expansion, at which point if he loses the battle headlong here, then that's first of all three bases at threat uh, from the low ground to high ground, but also a potential contained situation with reinforcements potentially coming out from Flash. In the meantime, everything... Oh, he's going to swing around. So he's leaving some siege tanks back in case uh, there is some movement across that back edge and is now going to go for that lower alleyway and it's still hugging those siege tanks along that doodad so there's never an opportunity for the Zelts to kind of swarm and slowly re re leapfrogging his way in to basically close this down. So even though he's been, he's down on supply, just bullying, slowly bullying his way in. Vulture's kind of sweeping in as well. And now gonna go for uh, forcing a fight here on the front. The Zealots engage him, but you see all these siege tanks back here? And it, there might have been a, a decent stasis, but I don't know that this is gonna be enough to break through. So some zealots get there to the south, but they get cleaned up as well. And now you still have a over a full control group of siege tanks 
remaining on the front and vultures can just reinforce and clear things up otherwise and 20 supply difference is state i wonder if there's an emp that i missed okay maybe these arbiters came out so late that there wasn't a stasis i don't think i missed a recall did i no uh so just late arbiters Psystorm finally getting upgraded this might be too little too late though we got some turrets being built 12 o'clock base also being secured there's the emp on the one arbiter that was there to the north but this is just too many siege tanks now and they're making their way to plus three weapons arbiter not getting out of the way and this is kind of one of those situations where yeah the pieces were there for jazz but just getting outmaneuvered is what it came it comes down to we have some zealots being produced out of the south um fortunately able to just barely dodge some mines to rejoin this attack force but now going to try to sweep across and break it 40 supply lead this might be sufficient but we don't have the stasis alongside and the tanks to the north unseaged no longer hugging that southern wall able to peel some siege tanks out of the midst of this and get a 50 resupply so actually not in a bad situation some more probes making their way bottom right by the way so flash not in position to knock those down so now flash might be in a spot of trouble here depending on the follow-up because this might be enough with uh well are we gonna see well never mind i was about i was expecting with the supply count Ooh, and now the zelt's heading that minefield to the south never mind uh still too many siege tanks here plenty of minefields in the way i was expecting the reinforcements to do some due diligence and clear some things out but instead getting wiped out still a lot of siege tanks outside not a full control group anymore but still enough to create enough havoc and the vultures continuing to filter forward and now this is kind of the interesting aspect of kickback this is as all of these bases are mining out and so where it would have been uh, oftentimes i'm i guess i was more expecting terran to end up in a contained situation flash reversing this and now effectively going for a starvation contain on his opponent and it looks like he's got that full seal Probes are exiting the three o'clock already in anticipation of potentially losing that. The Zealots just phase planning into a lot of mines and very much softening up. The Arbiters still haven't, I haven't seen a single stasis yet. And the Zealots just absolutely getting shredded. Plus three weapons, plus two armor now online. So three Arbiters, but none of them have been able to drop a single stasis this entire time. And he really needed that in these fights. Uh, 20, still 30 supply lead, but without some support. Now some units gonna go ahead and draw off and make their way towards that three o'clock a couple mines being dropped in between we have some reinforcements trying to make their way arbiters are actually gonna try to go to the south i think this is not that terrible a maneuver here from jazz because he has managed to so he's oh there's a good stasis at the three o'clock he's managed to sneak a lot of his workers out to the bottom right and he's mining very heavily here and so potentially what happens is jazz can rebuild and flash starves out because he's because he's going to get light here as well and he's going to need to take some additional bases and he's too busy trying to maintain a contain and this is a nice gorilla setup already here bottom right and i'm not sure if he we'll have to see a lot of this is going to come down to how long that bottom right hand base remains active another good stasis delaying things here at the three o'clock we have a few probes mining there and also how much of an army gets mounted because you really can't count on any units here coming out of the north at this stage underneath that contain but it looks like some solid defense and stasis is here at the three o'clock location jazz actually a little bit overproduced on workers that actually might not be uh too unsuitable if he just wants to play merry-go-round and hop around and uh, keep flash starved out over the long term some more zealots still trying to test the front it looks like he's just i think this is, these are more exploratory zealots to one clear mines for the follow-up attack but great timing here from flash to immediately have more vultures there to go ahead and keep those mines a little bit light he's starting to reinforce towards that three o'clock base and starting to kind of link those two groups up the dragoon's not going to be able to clear out those siege tanks some zealots trying to make their way up just as that stasis comes undone unfortunately this is still plus three weapons and so uh it looks like it's yeah plus two weapons plus one armor nice defense matrix actually left Zell going to be able to clear some stuff and actually it looks like Jazz able to break the contain all the way across and sending a lot of the troops and now Flash actually in a spot of trouble because he's mined out across these two bases. He's mined out at his main and we got full three bases here bottom right and that three o'clock base is still active. So I like this play from Jazz actually. He kind of poking away at this constantly forcing 
the pressure on the front, constantly dropping the mines and, and basically distracting Flash quite a bit from grabbing an additional base. And now Flash is kind of in an all-in situation here where he I don't think he can transition out of this. Because if he tries to transition out of this, that's going to give breathing room to Jazz to just get a big, massive army to start and uh, probably some tech and some arbiters out in the field to start smashing a lot of this. Zealots now going to stream across. These siege tanks are very, very grouped up. The vultures trying to swing back in time. Looks like they are going to get back, but and able to clear out that zealot line. But the thing is, is this is still continued pressure. That was a lot of vultures that were wiped out. And this is really going to, you can, you can look at the bank comparison here. This is still hurting Flash because he's still not getting any additional ground over Jazz. He hasn't stopped bottom right. He hasn't stopped three o'clock. I got to say the moment of the game might have been moving the workers. Nice EMP there on that army to clear it out. We do have another reinforcing group right here. Flash now starting to sweep around. But the thing is, is even if he kills top right, I don't know that top right wins him the game at this stage anymore uh, because we got a lot of gateways here. We got at least six gateways, seven gateways now in bottom right. Finally, defense matrix uh, ma matrixing. It looks like he is going to be able to take the three o'clock. He's trying to float uh, the command center that was at his third out to the nine o'clock location. It looks like Jazz on top of it, though, and is going to be able to meet him there with a counter attack force that's able to sneak underneath. If he can stop this base, I think that might be game. And he's going to find the SCVs as they're making the way across. So that's a lot of dead SCVs as well. Siege tanks trying to make their way in to defend this. I don't think this is a winning fight, even with plus three weapons. So a couple units, yeah, peeling off from Flash. And Defense Matrix might make the difference here. More Zealots swarming forward. The Zealots going to go ahead and drag into that minefield as well. What anticipation to know that that minefield was in place. But some brilliant mine dodging in the space of this. More Defense Matrix dropped. And that's going to keep that 9 o'clock base and Flash's hopes alive. So wiped out the 3 o'clock, holds the 9 o'clock. This is why he's uh, the absolute god of this game. But more units flooding out. Still 70 supply lead for Jazz in the midst of this. Flash making him work for it. Another Arbiter finally out in the field. And again, Flurry, Comsats, etc. The Zelts look like they're going to be able to break that contain. And actually, yeah, Flash going to GG. Jazz did it. Way to go. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, flooding out still had everything bottom right, and Flash recognizes that he wasn't going to be able to protect the 12 o'clock, which he needed, nor was he going to be able to protect the follow-up. So wild. Great play, though. Good one for the books. And this is why we go for it spoiler-free. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sure Jazz is a pro gamer. I'll try to find out who it was after the fact. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.